of this game. All right, Seamus, let's go to the Roma lineup. Okay, the Franco Tancredi in goal. The back four are going to be Maggiore, Rocca, the famous Italian international, Tironi and Peccianini. And in the midfield, uh, Santorini, Conte and Di Bartolomei. And up front, uh, Ugolotti, Ancelotti and Amenta. All right, the Cosmos will be starting Burton Meyer in the goal. The back line of Bruce Wilson, Carlos Alberto, Ricky Davis, and Jeff Durgan in the middle of the field. It'll be Johan Neskin, Ron Beckenbauer, and Vladislav Bogicevic in up front. Julio Romero back in the lineup for Vanderel, Kinaya, and Di Bernardo. And the game is underway. We'll give you the officials later. Italy in the maroon and orange uniforms, Cosmos all in white. Interception by Beckenbauer. Now toward Kinaya. Giorgio running it down nicely to Romero. And back to Ricky Davis. And the Cosmos come attacking. No 35-yard line for those of you who are familiar with the NASL. International rules. Di Bernardo back to Giorgio. Giorgio's pass is deflected. And now Roma comes out with the ball. Amenta. That was Amenta number 11. And the pass up here intended for Uglati was off the mark. And he was offside as well. Jim, uh, I think we may have to review the entire Roma team lineup. Uh, they give these lineups to the officials before the game, but my goodness, they play in all kinds of different positions with uh, sweepers and the libros and strikers uh, in, in really quite different positions. So we'll clarify that exactly where everybody's playing as the game progresses. Carlos Alberto. Now to Johan Naskins. Back to Durgan. Under pressure, Durgan flips it over here to Alberto. Alberto now to Ricky Davis. Rick Davis now. Brown second bar. Bruce Wilson heads it outside to Di Bernardo. Angelo back to Bogey. Bogey into Di Bernardo. Now to Wilson on the left. Bruce now gets it toward the box, but it's broken up by Roma. And Roma comes out flying. Long, high ball. No one really there. And the ball comes over the near sideline. We have a lot of Italian fans out here today. And a lot of these fans are really mixed. They're, the, they're for their, their native Roma. But on the other hand, they're also Cosmos fans as well. So you're going to hear cheering and booing for both clubs today. Well, the biggest hand I've heard in a long time for, uh, for Giorgio Quinalia when he came out. So there really are a lot of uh, hometown people here for him also. All right, Di Bernardo now racing on the left side. Angelo now touches it a little too hard, knocks it over the goal line. It'll be a goal kick coming up. Some outstanding players for this Roma club. Francisco Roca has long been an outstanding player in Italy. Yeah, he'll be playing over on the right side of the midfield. Uh, and uh, although he drifts around in the middle quite a bit too, but I think it's in the middle of the, uh, on the right side of the midfield, and Naskins, I can see right away, has decided he's going to have to pick up Roca. So that's going to be a, a matchup to watch. That's a good ball to DiBartolome. Comes in the box, the Cosmos converge, and Ricky Davis touches it back to Hubert Birkenmeyer. No score in the match if you're just tuning in. Transatlantic Challenge Cup, the Cosmos in Roma. Bogey, who's been brilliant for the Cosmos ever since Weissweiler came to town. And now the Quinalia. Giorgio, who scored two goals in Wednesday night's game, to Bruce Wilson. Wilson back to Franz Beckenbauer. Beckenbauer for Wilson. Oh, a nice little one touch to Di Bernardo. Now to Bogey. Bogey tried to touch it in through to Kinaya just a bit too hard. But again, early in the match, game, it's the Cosmos are displaying marvelous ball control skills. However, before you get your hopes up, let me tell you that Italy... Roma and the Italian teams for the most part, a lot of times they allow clubs to penetrate to a certain position and they can make you look good getting to a certain spot, but to get that final step is always very hard. That's right, that's right. It's, uh, it's all very nice and casual in the middle of the field, but it's warfare at the penalty area. All right, Roma now attacking, and Ancelotti lost the ball over the sideline. It was knocked out by Ricky Davis. All right, Roma in the box. Wilson heads it away. Ancelotti now fires and it's saved by Birkenmeyer. Carlo Ancelotti and Birkenmeyer had it covered all the way. Nothing, nothing the Cosmos and Roma. Giant Stadium, muggy day, but it's a lot better than last Wednesday night when it was raining the entire evening. Alberto to Beckenbauer. Braun, Giorgio, 
Giorgio tried to hit, get it over to Bogey, and it was a bit off the mark, and Bogey couldn't really do much with it. No, but also Beckenbauer read that first pass well because he saw it was going to be intended for Bogey, and Beckenbauer was cutting in at Bogey's left. I think Bogey was trying to knock it onto him. And, of course, this is the way you have to get through defenses like uh, Roma's. You've got to bring players forward very quickly uh, and hopefully get them through unmarked. Conti number seven, battling with Wilson. The Cosmos have the ball. Alberto, and, of course, the Italian fans very familiar with Carlos Alberto because it was Alberto who led that World Cup winning effort in Mexico against Italy in the final game and in fact I believe scored a goal in that match as well. Yeah, marvelous goal he scored. I think maybe the fourth goal of that game. All right, here's Beckenbauer looking. Naskins was making a run through the box. It comes to Naskins who shackles over the top. Johan Naskins over the top. No score in the match. Cosmos and Roma and we'll have more transatlantic soccer in just a moment. At Giant Stadium, Jim Carvelis and Seamus Mallon, the Cosmos, and Roma. No score in the match. We're in the first half. 38-24 to play in the half. Bogey. Mason. Alberto coming forward. Di Bernardo, a great pass. Angelo in the box looking for Kinalia, knocked out of the box. That'll be a Cosmos throw. Again, that crisscrossing run by uh, Di Bernardo finding the space after all the traffic was down the middle. That's, uh, that's what you got to do. They have to do a lot of running to beat Italian defenses. But intelligent running, not just random running. Di Bartolome, number eight. Roma attacking Cosmos. In the box, Beckenbauer picked it off. Franz wants people to move. He gets it now to Romero. Romero. Beautiful ball. Kinalia heads it toward Di Bernardo. Angelo working on the left side, but he lost control. Piccini. Piccinini was on defense over there, number 13. This telecast is authorized under rights granted by the North American Soccer League. Any rebroadcast or retransmission of the accounts, pictures, or descriptions of this telecast without the express written consent of the North American Soccer League and the USA Network is strictly prohibited. Time remaining in the first half, 37.04. And Bruce Wilson fouled. Free kick coming now for Roma. About 40 yards from goal. Amenta, number 11. Bruno Conti, number 7. Against Wilson, who tackled it away. Nice play by Bruce Wilson. Bogey. To Giorgio. Kinaya looking for room. Beautiful ball by Giorgio. And now here's Ricky Davis over the line. To Fraun. Second bar. Johan Naiskins for the Cosmos. Back to Fraun. Second bar. Look at Italy's just packed the penalty area. Alberto back to Fraun. Now to Rick Davis on the right. Rick's cross in the box. Naiskin saves. Naiskin's with a header. A great cross by Ricky Davis. And now it's Roma. And it's Naiskin's knocking it away from behind. He ran the length of the field to make the play. 
Well, look at this great cross. It's swerving ball. See it curling away from the keeper. Georgia being held up by Petronin. The diving header by Naiskins and a good block there by uh, Tancredi. All right, back to the live action. Still no score in the match. Kinalia, oh, trying to play as a bogey cutting through, but it was picked off by DiBartolome. Cironi, away from Kinalia. Cironi, good ball. And here comes Italy attacking with Ancelotti outside the box. And again, it was Cosmos breaking it up. It was Rick Davis. Romero, a bad ball intended for bogey. And coming back for Italy is DiBartolome, number eight. We've got Uglotti over on the... And now here's the shot by Amenta. And another shot that was affected away beautifully. Great save by Bergenmeyer. We haven't had any goals yet, but we've had some outstanding plays, Seamus. A tremendous save by Birkenmeyer. What a really well-taken shot, too. It was really a, a snappy ball on the half volley and was going right to the corner and a flashing uh, Birkenmeyer touched it away. The game's first corner kick going to Roma. And it's second Bauer hitting it out. Romero trying to chase it down. It was knocked away over the near sideline. Let's watch this marvelous save by Hubert Birkenmeyer. Well, it was a carom and the ball came loose. Uh, and then the, the volley, the follow-through from Di Bartolome, I think... Uh, and he lets go with it uh, after this rebound. Uh, I think you'll see the rebound first. Here's the little deke. Here's the shot. There's the rebound. Here's the follow-up. And look at it going to the corner and a great touch away. All right, we're back to the live action now. Still no score in the game, but we've had everything but a score. Great saves, great shots on goal. De Bertolome now, and it's broken up by Cosmos. Maggiore, number two. And they get it back to Santorini, number six. The 11 player is Amenta. Mauro Amenta. Santorini, number six. And Birkenmeyer came out and made the play. From Giant Stadium, the Cosmos nothing, Roma nothing. 33-23 to play in the first half. We'll have more transatlantic soccer in just a moment. All right, here comes Roma attacking, and it's broken up by Johan Nation. To Romero. Romero. Touched it ahead of him just a bit too much. Lost control. It was tackled away by Santonini. And now for Ugliotti. Knocked away by Alberto. Back to Ugliotti. And Cosmo's fortunate on a slip there. Ancelotti was getting in position to fire at Sheamus, but he slipped on the AstroTurf. Cosmo's coming the other way. Romero. Trying to play it through to Giorgio just a bit too far. Good idea by Romero that time. And the timing just a bit off. Back to the live action. Jim Carvelis and Seamus Mallon. 32 minutes and 13 seconds to play in the first half. Still no score. Roma and the Cosmos. Jim, so far much of the damage for Roma has been coming from the left side. Ancelotti and Amenta rather than Roca. Those players have been getting through and giving Ricky Davis a hard time as well as Romero. And that could be where most of the thrust will come for Roma. Bruce Wilson knocked it away. We've been talking so much about the great defense of not only Roma but Italian clubs in general. And we don't want you to get the impression they can't play offense because if you've been watching the game, you've noticed that they've created some marvelous opportunities. Italian soccer, one of the great, the, you know, the premier division, the first division in uh, Italy, one of the great soccer divisions in the world. Oh, again, Cosmo's fortunate there, but there was offside. The Italian player was offside in the box. By Cosmos now, who in the first 10 minutes of the game, uh, control a lot of things, but Italy's really come on of late here. They've gotten their offensive show together. Cosmos trying to attack, but again, Roma picks it off. Cironi, number five. Strong defender. Cironi looking upfield now, looking for the open man. Beckenbauer checks him off. Game two today will feature Manchester City at Vancouver. And then the big doubleheader here Monday evening, Monday afternoon, I should say. And it's going to be what? 
Corner kick. Corner kick coming up for Ridley. For I'm Roma. A, I must say, Jim, I'm very impressed by Roma's attacking. They, they switch uh, positions very well. They look uh, very dangerous as midfield players coming through in particular. And on the corner, the header goes over the top, so the Cosmos will have a goal kick coming up. That Monday doubleheader starts Eastern time, 12.30. 12.30. And it'll pit Manchester City against this Roma club in game one. And game two will be Vancouver and Cosmos. All right, here's Kinalia. Giorgio rolls it to Ricky Davis. Rick Davis now with Romero ahead of him. And Romero is offside. Romero offside. So, from Giant Stadium, still no score in the match for Cosmos and Roma. We'll have more transatlantic soccer in just a moment. Still no score. Davis chips it in the box. And easily handled in there. But Romero just knocked it away. There's a shot and a goal! Canalia! Well, another, another Canalia goal. Not one of the prettiest ones, but again, the opportunistic Canalia we see there. Good, uh, good central pressure by uh, Romero. Fried the ball loose. We're going to take a look at it. Here's the nice ball again. Ricky Davis coming down the right side. He's going to overlap and hit that ball over his chest it down, but not controlled. Now look at Romero pinching in there. Giorgio pulls it through nicely, follows it up, and slides it into the far corner. Man, you just don't leave that man alone in the box like that. Are you sure that was slow motion? <laughs> See, now he's gotten a lot quicker these days. <laughs> Giorgio has now scored his third goal in the tournament. He scored two against Manchester City in game one, and the Cosmos have electrified the crowd here, and it's one nothing Cosmos. Key now, yeah going against Roma. He's done that before when he was a great goal scorer in Italy with Lazio. You know, Giorgio loved getting that goal. And give a lot of credit on that play to Romero. You saw scrambled it away and got it to Kinaia initially. Well, I think it's important to not to let Italian players play comfortably because they really are excellent on the ball. They're beautiful on the ball players. So if you let them play on the ball, then uh, they'll really kill you. Romero did not let him uh, come out there, saw the chance, and went in and poached it for Giorgio. But again, give credit to Canalia for converting that opportunity. Here comes Giorgio. Oh, ball coming here for Di Bernardo. In the box, knocked away. Angelo crosses over, fires, and it's knocked away. And the Cosmos. Canalia, nice save. And the Cosmos will have a throw in. What a brilliant play that time. Kinaya feeding Di Bernardo. And yeah. it was almost two to nothing. And Di Bernardo making a great run getting inside the defender, which of course is what a defender never wants to see happen, and uh, then try to work his way around them. But it's good to see how Angelo is really coming along very nicely this season with the Cosmos. Alberto and the pass for Kinaya just a bit off the mark. And now Roma counter attacking beautifully. Here comes Roma up the right side with Ancelotti number 10. They've got Ugolotti in front of the goal here and Conti on the left side. They go through, and it's Alberto knocking it away. It was intended for Ugolotti, Guido Ugolotti. Nice clearing pass by Bogey to Romero. Touches nicely for Giorgio, who turns, and now lays it off for Bogey, and beautiful ball work again by the Cosmos. It's been a good game, hasn't it? Oh, it's been very exciting. Much more attacking than we expected. Ricky Davis cuts it back beautifully for Bogey. Bogey, head of the box to Johan Naiskin. Naiskin's in for Di Bernardo, and he was knocked away off the ball by Domenico Maggi No, check it. That was Petzinini. That's right, Petzinini. A little bumping there, but nothing really illegal. Uh, 
Italian defenders always play pretty tough, but nothing unfair. It's always good, robust tackling. Durgan trying to tackle away, but Ugolotti stayed on it. Ugolotti, big, strong player. He scored the only goal for Roma in Vancouver as they got a 1-1 tie in that game. Amenta plays it in the box for Conti. Conti tried to cross it, and it went over the goal line. The last touch by Carlos Alberto, who has been brilliant defensively in the first half. He's had to be because Roma has applied a lot of pressure. Well, I think uh, when Carlos comes forward also, uh, you will then notice that Roma, when it seizes the ball, will try to go very quickly down the middle rather than just playing it wide because when they can get Carlos out of the center of the defense, they want to go forward fast. Bruno Conti, and he takes the corner outside. Peccianini. Here's the high cross, and it's easily handled. Birkenmeyer handled it easily. Here's Bogey. Cosmos leading one to nothing on a key. Now your goal and assist, I'm sure, will go to Romero. Now here's Giorgio. Touching it back to Franz. Directs traffic. Naiskin's making a run off the ball. Here comes a long ball for Naiskin. Defender got there first. Johan will throw it in from the near sideline. Amazing that Beckenbauer even saw him. He was looking left and running to the right side. Off the ball was Naiskin's, and he found him with a pass. But a good play by the defender that time. He quickly recovered. Now Alberto. Carlos to bogey outside the box. Alberto going in the box. They roll it to Quinalia. Shot goal! Quinalia shot goal, Jimmy. It's just kind of a formula, isn't it? You find yourself saying it every game, sometimes twice a game. And uh, again, a lovely pass into him. Again, on Giorgio's left foot, his supposedly weak foot. And he just pumps it in the far corner. Tancredi with no chance. Here you see the replay. Uh, Beckenbauer again pushing the ball through and there it comes uh, to Bogey Bogey sizing things up looking around trying to find the opening gives it to Giorgio who pulls it under control turns very nicely not really anybody on him at his back and he whacks it in the far corner great assist to Bogey from Giant Stadium now it's the Cosmos 2 and Roma nothing and here comes Romero racing for the Cosmos outside the box Romero oh just under Pinaglia's foot Giorgio now has scored four goals in this tournament. Can't get over how quick Kinalia is now that he's lost that weight. Marvelous quickness now in Kinalia. He's playing like he was 25 years old. Di Bernardo now to Beckenbauer. Here come the Cosmos again. A little give and go. They were trying to get a give and go to Beckenbauer coming through. 2-0 to the Cosmos. They struck very quickly. Kinalia both times. Durgan won it in the air to Romero. Cuts it back for Wilson. This man, Beckenbauer, is having a great game. He's absolute, look at that lovely ball. He's doing everything in there, just dominating the middle of the field. You know, he's playing almost a front sweeper, Jim. You notice that there? Yes. He's pulling back a lot and uh, just sort of absolutely dictating the middle of the field. He's running the show. And there's no one in the world that runs it much better than Franz Beckenbauer. And it looks as if the Cosmos will have him for a couple more years. In the box, knocked away. Here's the shot of the goal. Ugolotti. So the Cosmos victimized in a bad clearance in there. And Ugolotti picked it up and nailed it. And it's a 2-1 game now. I think Birkenmeyer also badly unsighted in this situation. He really doesn't see this shot. And that's what he's complaining about afterwards. Uh, the setup you see now from, the, uh, from behind the goal. It, it looks as though Davis has got things under control, but a nice uh, swerving ball that goes in there is not really cleared out fully, as you say. Now look at the crowd of players in front. Uh, they, they part at the last second, and it's fired through there by Ugolotti, and no chance for Birkenmeyer. So Roma comes right back in the game now, and it's 2-1 Cosmos. Now against Manchester City, the Cosmos scored the game's first two goals, and then it was City coming back with two to tie before they won 3-2. Rick Davis now. Under pressure, Kinalia won it in the air, and they pushed Johan Naiskin. From Giant Stadium, it's 2-1, the Cosmos over Roma. And we'll be back with more transatlantic soccer in just a moment. All right, Cosmos now coming with Beckenbauer, 2-1. Cosmos on top. Kinalia both goals for the Cosmos. Ugolotti for Roma. A little flick to Naiskin. 
Knocked away, but he tackled it back again. Comes in the box. And easily picked off then by Tancredi. For the Cosmos, some brilliant close-in one-touch passes. Entertaining game. And As was Wednesday night's game. That's right. And again, of course, a very crowd-pleasing sliding tackle by who, who else? Uh, Naskins, of course, who does this thing on this rug, as uh, though it doesn't bother him in the least. Seamus, I think we really ought to compliment the North American Soccer League. All right, two to one. Cosmos over Roma. 20 minutes to play in the first half. Seamus, I think we really ought to compliment the North American Soccer League, Phil Woosnam and his staff for organizing this tournament. It's been a long time coming. I know Phil's been wanting to do this for years. He felt now the time was right. And off the games we've seen so far in the competition, I think it's been a giant success. It really has. The crowds have seen wonderful matches uh, under very bad weather the other night. That game with Manchester City was just a classic tight game out in Vancouver. And, of course, the doubleheader back here on Monday is gonna, should be a super one. All right, Cosmos get a corner kick. This is Bruce Wilson. Here it comes in the box, and the header by D. Bernardo, who ran right onto it, and it went over the top, but he had a great chance there, Seamus. He did. He came from behind the defenders, and I can see a couple of those uh, Italian defenders in there, particularly number 11, who I believe is a Menta, uh, complaining that nobody warned him that he was about to be blindsided by a great run uh, from D. Bernardo. Now here, here's the corner kick again. Uh, you'll see it swing away from the goal, and watch as Di Bernardo goes in inside the defender who had not expected him from, to come from that position and got his head on it well but couldn't get the ball down. All right, back to the live action now, and it's Roma in the middle of the field. Not a very good ball, but nicely kept in, and Roma comes attacking with Roca. The cross, and it's deflected. Alberto got a foot on it, I believe, and Birkenmeyer alertly picked it off in front of the goal. Now the Cosmos coming with second bar. Franz has a little bit of space. Second bar. Slides it through to Romero. Romero around the defender, but it was picked off at the last moment. Good help by the Italian defense that time. Cosmos pressing now. And now a foul called by the referee. Now, a little pushing there on Romero. By the way, that, that Roma goal by Guido Ugalotti coming at 22.50 the first half, assisted by Mauro Amenta, the number 11 player, and Santorini, number 6, who is the libero, the sweeper, uh, but a real classic Italian libero. That is, he comes right up when he sees the opportunity, much the way, same way that we see Carlos Alberto doing in the North American Soccer League. All right, Roma. Alberto broke it up. Di Bernardo to Beckenbar. Amenta coming on second bar. They go to Alberto nicely to Bogey. They've got Davis running up the right side. Not a good pass by Bogey. Bogey got it back again. And a good play that time by Santorini away from Quinalia. Moro Amenta on the right to Conte. Echinini now to Roca. Roca over the midfield line. D. Bartolome. 2-1 to Cosmos. Jim Carvelis and Seamus Mallon. 17 minutes to play in the half. And the ball rolls under the foot of Ancelotti. Wilson to Beckenbar. Now to Bogey. Giorgio at midfield. To Rick Davis, who's been doing a lot of work up that right side. Now to Bogey. Ogilotti, by the way, with that goal. That was his second goal in the tournament. Into the box for Romero. Di Bernardo. Angelo. Nice defensive play out of the box. Cosmos collect near midfield with second bar and the time reading 16 25 to play in the half. Wilson trying to get it to Di Bernardo. Again, strong defensive work from Roma. For Roca. Roca and Alberto. Two great names. Nice chest trap. Beautiful work by Ancelotti. In the box. Wilson heads it. And now a collision. Naskins and Amenta, and they call a foul on Amenta. 
2-1, the Cosmos over Roma. 15.50 to play in the first half. We'll have more at Man's Atlantic Soccer in just a moment. Still 2-1 to Cosmos. Di Bernardo from Quinalia headed away. And stolen from Romero by Maggiota. Good ball. And up the left wing comes Ancelotti of Roma. Durgan picks him up. Jeff Durgan, the young 18-year-old youngster. The cross, not a good one. And Bruce Wilson. Headed it to Birkenmeyer, who made a good save to keep it from going over the line and giving away a corner kick. Bogey to Franz. Jim Carvelis and Seamus Mallon from Giant Stadium. Hope you're enjoying transatlantic soccer. Another big game coming up for you after this one. Manchester City at Vancouver. And Monday's big doubleheader will feature Manchester City against Roma in the first game at 12.30 Eastern time and the Cosmos against Vancouver in game two in the conclusion of the tournament. All right, here's Bogey. Alberto outside the box. To Georgia. Oh, almost a great pass to Alberto. Almost a great play there. Well, both uh, Carlos Alberto and Beckenbauer are uh, seeing the opportunity of uh, the give and go coming through and trying to take it. Now, he'll see it again uh, coming up. Carlos Alberto, the minute he hits the ball, he runs onto it. Three players there, but the threat is almost between the three of them. And then again, Carlos Alberto almost intercepts the back pass. All right, back to the live action now. The Cosmos will get a throw in in their own zone near the midfield line. Throw it back to Bogey now with 13.24 to play in the first half. Browns back and bar. And now to Ricky Davis. Ricky Davis on the right side. He's had a lot of room all day. Ricky tries to cut inside. It's knocked down. Knocked down by Ancelotti, number 10. So Davis, who's been going right all game long that time, tried to fool the defender and cut to the inside. Well, again, the Italians, of course, playing up front with two strikers, Ugolotti and Conti in the center, giving Ricky Davis a lot of room in the right, but that's the sort of thing uh, Roma's used to seeing in their own country anyhow. So overlapping fullbacks are very much a part of their experience. Beckenbauer chips it in the box, and it went over the head of Di Bernardo. Quinalia was on the other side. Conti with Wilson on that sideline. And he makes him give it up. Bogey touched it. And ball, Bogey to the Cosmos. Amenta, number 11 of Roma with 12.25 to play in a good first half. Cosmos lead 2-1. to one. Both Cosmos goals by Giorgio Quinaglia. And Ugolati. Guido Ugolati scored for Roma. Davis made the defensive play again. Now here's Romero. Romerito over the midfield line, racing up the right wing. Romero tries to beat the defender, is pushed off again by number 10, and Salati drew the foul again. And now the referee, I believe, is going to have a few words for Ancelotti. He's also got his hand up indicating indirect. I think he's calling obstruction there in Ancelotti. I think Ancelotti underestimated Romero's speed and gave him a little bit of room, gave him the inside angle a bit, and then realized at the last minute that he had to do something to stop him, so he had to foul him. Not a bad foul. In fact, it's been a very clean, very well-played game. Second bower now to Rick Davis. Overran it. Got it back to Franz, and he threw it away. Ricky Davis, I think, may have had the shot initially, did not take it. And I think he even fooled Franz, who didn't expect to return pass. And now this time, it's a foul on Ricky Davis. All 
Amenta now with the ball. That pass. Davis picks it off. Now to Romero. Romero over the midfield line. He has Davis on the right if he wants him. Kinali in the middle. He goes back to Beckenbauer. Di Bernardo open on the left side, and Beckenbauer hits it right on the bullseye. Now Angelo looking in the box. Goes cross field to Rick Davis. Knocked down and fouled by Maggiore. In play quickly to Alberto, hooking in the box, and it goes over the goal line. It'll be a goal kick coming up. So from Giant Stadium with 10.33 to play in the half, it's still 2-1 Cosmos over Roma, and we'll have more transatlantic soccer in just a moment. Well played first half here at Giant Stadium. Cosmos struck for two quick goals by Kinaya to take a 2-0 lead, but Ugalati came back to make it 2-1. We've had marvelous play from both clubs. Good defensive play, great offensive play, a lot of good things created. We've had some good saves by goalkeepers. A little bit of everything, Seamus. Yeah, and on three goals, as you mentioned, and at the top of the show, we did talk about the fact that one goal could be crucial, uh, but maybe not today. Uh, you got a feeling that there are going to be more goals, but uh, I doubt it's going to end up 2-1. Of course, it's a very warm day. It's very tiring. By Cosmos, that's Di Bernardo doing a good job coming back to pick that ball off. All right, Cosmos back to the live action on the attack. Here's Ricky Davis right of the box. In for bogey. No, Kinalia coming through. Now Beckenbauer, a shot right on goal. Franz fired from about 22 yards. Not a lot of pace in the ball. It looked like as if he was trying to pick out a corner. Well, on that cross to uh, bogey disappointed the ball was played over him, but actually Davis used him well as a decoy and and uh, the ball was flighted a bit too slowly. Otherwise, Giorgio had his man beaten for the header, but the man caught up to him first. Hard shot on goal, hugging the ground and scrambling to smother it was Birkenmeyer. Yeah. So it's still 2-1 to one Cosmos in the first half. Second Bauer goes to Nations. Yes, Seamus. That was Tironi, Jim, uh, number five, who's a central defender. Again, uh, lots of position switching by this Italian team. And nobody is stuck to one place. And they come and switch positions very well. And that's, of course, tactically very important and very dangerous for the Cosmos. All right. Romero picked up the loose ball again. Bruce Wilson in the box now. Conti, good job. Great defensive job by Conti. And gets away from a tackle by Di Bernardo. Here comes Conti racing up the right side. Bogey coming to play him. He goes to Roca. Good ball. Roca on the right. He has Ugolati in the box. Ugolato in the box. Now a shot handled, and that time Alberto just kind of cut the angle on him. Well, you talk about players switching, but consider that Ricky Davis is a fullback, and he's had the ball a lot of today. He's looked like a right wing most of the game. Alberto's ventured up on the attack, has cut in the box a few times. So that's the new wave of soccer. It's total soccer, and it's very exciting. Well, you've also got to create uh, situations where you outnumber the other team, Jim, and and they, it does no good for defenders to stay back in their own area while uh, the rest of their teammates are matched one against one. You've got to come up and create those extra man situations in order to move the ball forward. Both teams have done a lot of running here in the first half, and one has to wonder with the muggy conditions, it's very warm, how this is going to affect both clubs in, in the second half of the game. Can they keep this up? And Salati now, number 10 of Roma. Nice ball. Hansi on the right. Bruce Wilson defending. Takes him out of the box. Beautiful move. Oh, what a save! Can you believe that? Birkenmeyer was going right. The shot went to his left, and I don't know how he reacted to it. Incredible. Watch it. That is an or just an amazing save. I hear that the ball's going to the far corner. He just touches away with his hand as he was running. As you said, Jim, he's going across the other way to reach out with his left hand and knock it away. An amazing save. Incredible reflex save. Here's the high cross, and Beckenbauer just heads it over the goal line again. He gives the corner away, but got it out of danger. Cosmos pick it up. Di Bernardo with 6.19 to play in the half. And the Cosmos on top. Good pass. 2-1 Cosmos. 
Now to Romero. He's got Davis on the right. He fires instead, and on one hop, it's easily covered by Franco Tancredi, the goalkeeper of Roma. Well, it looked like an unusual shot, but Romero did notice that Tancredi was uh, poaching a little bit, watching for the cross to Giorgio, and he thought he saw some space on the left side of the goal, so he had a whack at it, but it was not a very good shot. All right, here comes Roma coming through now, and Alberto blocked the shot down. Beckenbauer foul. Beckenbauer going for the header. Foul, Carlo Ancelotti. So it'll be a free kick for Roma. Coming up with 5.35 to play in the half. 2-1, there's the story numbers-wise. Five and a half minutes to play in the half. Not dangerous at all. Stay tuned at halftime. We've got some special features coming up for you. One of the nice features about this tournament, Jim, we were talking about, is that while there is a lot of intensity and competitiveness, the teams have come out to play entertaining soccer. They really have. Wilson on the left. Good ball to Romero. Romero playing it back now for Beckenbauer. There's this hard shot that just went wide. Beckenbauer saw the goalkeeper out of position, or at least he thought he was out of position, and tried to fool him and knock it in that right corner. It's 85 degrees and muggy here in the New Jersey Meadowlands this afternoon. And of course, it's an artificial turf uh, surface so that heat radiates off. It bounces up uh, at a greater temperature than, than uh, even the air temperature. It's tough on the players. Durgan picked it off. Romero plays it back for Ricky Davis. 423 to play and a half. Davis around and Salati. Now to Franz Beckenbauer. Somebody said before the game, the weather is just kind of typical for the clubs that the Cosmos have been playing at the time they played them. We had a, a misty, rainy night, and we played an English team, and now we have a beautiful, bright, <laughs> muggy day, and we're playing Italy. That's right. No, I've uh, been in Rome only once, but it was just like this, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Amenta. Plays it back now for Mauricio Turoni. Nice little touch there. Beautiful ball by Santorini. That pass runs a little long, and it's picked off by Wilson. Now, again, the Italian team playing on an unfamiliar surface. However, they've had some experience already because they played in Vancouver. Now here comes second bar. Pass to Quinalia. Di Bernardo's on the left. Giorgio fires, and it was deflected. Boy, he took a hard shot. And it went off the defender, and the Cosmos will now fire it in. Throw incoming. Ricky Davis, who has a long throw, by the way, he's capable of throwing it deep in the box. He throws it outside now, the Beckham bar. Carlos Alberto venturing forward, thinking offense. Now to Giorgio. Kinaya play it back to Franz. Franz under control now with 307. For Naskins, trying to win it in the air, and, and it goes over the goal line. He was defended very well that time by Franco Peccianini. Well, Beckenbauer doesn't usually knock uh, balls into the goal area for uh, Cosmos attackers to head down because that's not one of the strengths of the game. But if you are going to put it in there, then the one person you do look for is Naskins. And even though he's marked by Peccianini, he almost got to that one. Good ball to Roca. As Roma attacks Cosmos, Bogey on the defense. Roca, marvelous skill. Conti. Outside the box. As Seamus said before, the Italian players are wonderful on the ball. Sturgeon. Collision, Cosmos clear it. Di Bernardo, I believe, is fouled. No. They're calling it the other way. They're calling foul on Di Bernardo. And the fans do not like the call. Well, a referee, uh, you saw his name earlier. We should mention it's Werner Winterman. He's an experienced uh, World Cup referee. And, and uh, I think he's done a good job so far. Yes, it's a judgment has. call there. Yes, he has. Alberto heads it out. Roma retains it. Cianini. Offside. Offside. Ugalati was offside. A minute 40 to play and a half. Johan Naskin, who had that disc problem, just started playing a couple of weeks ago. I thought he had his best game of the year against Manchester City Wednesday night. Bogey, Davis, Denaskin, a minute 18, in the box, 
Headed out. Italian defenders, Seamus, excellent in the year, aren't they? They are good, and uh, you notice that very rarely do they head the ball away to one of the Cosmos players. It's always to one of their own players or out, certainly into open space away from danger. Bruce Wilson and Conti colliding there in Alberta. Look at that nice oh. little touch. Beautiful. <laughs> Second bar. To Kinaya, but it's broken up. What a great defensive play that time by Tironi. Now Tironi, the stopper, coming forward. 35 seconds. Not a good ball by Ugolati. Birkenmeyer has it with 29 seconds on the clock to play in the first half. And the Cosmos on top of Roma, 2-1. to one. The Cosmos, the only club that has won outright in this tournament. They beat Manchester City. Vancouver tied this Roma team 1-1 last Wednesday night. The Cosmos looking to pick up more points here. In the Transatlantic Challenge Cup, the first ever. Cosmos just eating up the clock now. And that is it. That is the end of an exciting first half. And again, stay tuned because during halftime, we have some outstanding highlights for you. You'll want to stay tuned for that. We'll also take a look at some of the fine goals in the first half. That's the end of the first half. The score is the Cosmos 2, AS Roma 1. We'll be back for halftime after this. Uh, one goal for Roma, two for the Cosmos. Shots pretty even, 11 to 9 in favor of Roma. Uh, corner kicks four to one in favor of Roma. Save three uh, for Roma, six for the Cosmos. Some of those spectacular by Birkenmeyer. Seven fouls to five, pretty even there, and three offsides apiece. Bim Reisbergen is in the game, as anticipated, replacing Jeff Durgan. All right, Beckenbauer, the Cosmos, just starting the second half. Bogey heads it back to Nathan. Braun, two substitutions for Roma. Number 16, Scarnecchia, Roberto Scarnecchia, and 15, Paolo Giovanelli. David. Di Bernardo, and the shot goes wide. Shot by Di Bernardo. Goal kick, Roma. Let's well, try to pick up the substituted players for you on the Roma team uh, for the moment. The moment uh, I don't see Di Bartolome out there. Um, I think he's been substituted for. This is Tironi, number five. Here's the new man, Giovanelli. Paolo Giovanelli. Ball over the sideline, and now Roca complaining, and he may have a good point. He was out of bounds, but the ball wasn't, and you can do that in soccer. As long as the ball stays in bounds, unlike basketball, where if, if uh, the man is out of bounds and the ball is in bounds, 
It is considered out. Any a few choice words here for the linesman Philip Clark, who uh, probably blissfully ignorant of what he was saying, and probably just as well. All right, Wilson touches it now to Ricebergen. Ricebergen knocked down from behind. Garnetia and Ricebergen, two new players in the game, collide. Fall on Garnetia. He now you put it in play now to Beck and Bar. Here's Maron playing it toward Bogey, but it was broken up nicely by Roca. Giovanelli, number 15. Roma coming into Cosmo zone. And attacking a lot of players. Moving a lot of people forward. Now, a lot of times in Italian soccer, they'll play two men forward and just look for that one break. And a one nothing game is very common in Italy. But they're not playing that style here, Seamus. They're really moving forward. They've shown us a lot of imagination offensively. Well, they've also taken out number seven, Conti, who did a tremendous amount of work in the first half, Jim. You called his name out several times on long runs down the right side. And he has been replaced, so we'll see uh, if they can really replace his aggressiveness up the right side with, uh, with number 16, who's come in to play for them, as you mentioned, Skarnikia. All right, corner kick now coming. We're almost at, this is their fifth corner kick to one for the Cosmos. And Ugolotti got way up in the air and just missed. Beautiful cross for Ugolotti. Good effort by the big forward. And the game still stays. David Bursich is in the game. A goal for the Cosmos. David Bursich in the second half for Birkenmeyer. Now here's Riceberger. Quickly to Beckenbar. Naskin. Had to play it back to Riceberger. His pass hopped over the foot of Tinalia. A little bit too much pace on it. Cerrone. 2-1. The Cosmos over Roma. Santorini number six. Giovanelli number 15. Five yards in the Cosmos zone. Garnecchia. Marked by Di Bernardo. And Scarnecchia lost it over the sideline. Game two this afternoon in the Transatlantic Challenge Cup will feature Van Manchester City at Vancouver. We have a big crowd for that. They're very involved with the English League in, uh, in Canada and Vancouver in particular. They know a lot about the English clubs and uh, there'll be a lot of fans out there for that one. Well, of course, they know that uh, out there also the Cosmos beat Manchester City and uh, Vancouver and the Cosmos have a really super rivalry going and they don't want to let their flag in down to half mast out there. They want to show that they too can beat Manchester City. Naiskins knocked it away. Referee said play on and now he turned around and almost missed Ricky Davis's handball. Now complaining that time was more uh, Menta. He thought that Naiskins followed him. It didn't look like that from here. Like Naiskins got the ball. Menta was arguing. And the referee was telling him to play on and the ball was behind him but he quickly turned around in time to see Davis handle the ball. Naiskins broke up the pass. Bogey. And Romero had it knocked away and it goes over the sideline. Last touch by Maggiota. Domenico Maggiota. So the Cosmos will throw it in. It's been a slow pace to start the second half, Seamus. Yeah, it has. It looks as though people are on the on the field there are anxious not to make too many mistakes to get into the rhythm of the game slowly again and not uh, not overcommit too early and don't make any of those fatal mistakes. Of course, you can't one mistake against an excellent team and like either of these two teams can be fatal. Here's Alberto to Bogey. Uh, Bogey was trying to get it right back to Carlos, but it was read nicely by the goalkeeper Tancredi. He saw it all the way. But a good idea. Giovanelli. Ricebergen broke it up. And now they're going to call what? Foul against Ricebergen. Now Roma is upset because they felt that uh, they had possession and they should have had a, an advantage rule there. I think uh, Ricebergen must have, must have held him or something or when he, the ball slows down here. There's a little carom there off Mason, so the ball loses a little bit of pace 
slows down a fool drives for he's got to reach back and now the arm goes around the shirt and oh, referee may have fouled him. him i yeah. think that contact was created by the offensive player now deflected in the box look out and it goes to the goal no goal no goal pushing no goal they say the goalkeeper was interfered with he was pushed and the referee does wins them and takes the goal away takes the goal away and Bursich is down now i don't know if the cosmos have another goalkeeper on their bench bergenmeyer was replaced by Bursich and uh Let's watch it again, James. Well, he's coming out for the ball. He uh, looks as though he's well in control of it. Uh, he slipped, actually, going down, and uh, he has the ball at his fingertips just as uh, Ugalati came in, and he clearly did knock the ball out of his hand. Uh, but Ugalati's arguing, of course, that he that the ball was not uh, in his possession, that it was still uh, somewhat loose. Well, you know, I, I, and I think he may have a point there, Tim. A very close call. Meanwhile, Giorgio Canalia is holding court in the center circle out there. Uh, discussing with all and sundry who want to listen uh, his particular point of view got four players from <laughs> roma out there debating uh in uh, undoubted uh, fluent italian david versus the native of st louis missouri getting a chance here in the second half some of the fans booing the goal being taken away it was a close call And now here is second bar. I think the uh, Italians are a little more aggressive in the second half. I think Roma is coming out here a little sharper. Bogey, get it back to Nathan. Cosmos yet to get into their flow in the second half. Here's Rick Davis touching it fast. Now crossing the box, easily handled, but Bogey hustles over to pick it off. Bogey had kind of a quiet first half. But it looks like he's moving into a more advanced position, Seamus, in the second half. That's right. I think he's pretty much conceded the distribution role to, to Beckenbauer. He's not a bad guy to handle that chore. Uh, so he's moving into a more offensive position. You're right. Romero, nice job to keep the ball away from three Italian defenders. Now here's Naiskin. A nice touch to Bruce Wilson coming outside the box. Cross for Naiskin, knocked away. Naiskin's made a very dangerous run through the box, and that pass just eluded him. Roca. Run past Reisbergen. Roca, look, good ball. Garnicchia and Alberto beautifully heads it away. Carlos Alberto, a great defensive play in front of the goal. Great header by Alberto. Again, he is under pressure, had to dive towards the end line and flick the ball away, and he got it right to Reisbergen with Roca right near him. Davis, a nice ball to Romero. Romero. And he's obstructed. <laughs> That's the most obvious <laughs> foul of this year. He looked like a Roman traffic cop right there. <laughs> Maggiotta just stopped him cold. Cosmos with a free kick coming. 27 yards from goal. Beckenbauer has Davis to his left. He goes in the box for the Naiskin setter, and a foul has been called against Naiskin, jumping over the defender. Again, I think, Jim, that nobody really expects Naiskins to uh, convert that into a shot on goal, but the, the idea is to, for another player to release and play off a Naiskins header. You see that? Uh, he leans over the defender there and trying to get it, but obviously he was trying to get it across the face of the goal for the breaking Giorgio Canaglia. All right, as we're back to the live action now, the Cosmos throwing it in at midfield. We played nine and a half minutes of the second half. The game is still stayed at 2-1 Cosmos. Now Wilson from Bogey. Bruce away from Skarnecchia. Wilson, nice ball to Bogey. Oh, the give and go pass was just broken up. Ugalati, the goal scorer for Roma. And knocked away by Di Bernardo. It'll belong to Roma. From Giant Stadium, 35-13 to play in the match. Cosmos up 2-1 over Roma. We'll have more transatlantic soccer in just a moment. All right, Roma now moving on the attack with Taroni. Naiskin's coming out to bother. Peccinini. And now what's the call going to be? Foul against Wilson. Fouling Roberto Scarnecchia. 
Petronini will put it in play to Roca. In Cosmo's zone on the right sideline. Roca around DiBernardo. And Bogey takes the ball away. To Naskins and out of DiBernardo. Still 2-1 Cosmos. And Tironi took it away from Di Bernardo. 33-54 in the match. And the Cosmos on top of Roma 2-1. Jim Carvelis and Seamus Mallon from Giant Stadium. Hope you're enjoying Transatlantic Challenge Cup. And Aitken going up in the air to block the pass away again. You can see him lining himself up. He knew he was going to block that cross. He had it perfectly timed. He just turned his back on it and took the full force of it uh, under his elbow. Giovanelli now attacking Cosmos in the box and Ricky Davis got a head on it and Burst has kept it in play nicely. Good play by Ricky Davis. They throw it out to Ricebergen. Naskins is an outstanding athlete. He is not only a good soccer player, he's an outstanding athlete. That's why he can do some of those things. And this is going to blow your mind. He a, a, was a great baseball player as well in Holland. Here's Kinalia. Di Bernardo. Oh, and it was stripped to the ball. Dangerous. That's the Cosmos' best chance of the second half. As Kinalia and Di Bernardo worked well that time, and Angelo was in a good position. But again, the Roma defense was up to it. Here comes Tironi again. Breaking through. Ricebergen knocked him down. Foul on Vim Ricebergen. Well, Naskins was asked by the Chicago Cubs <laughs> to come to America for a tryout. He'd been scouted over there, and they play a lot of baseball in Holland, by the way. The Naskins was an outstanding player. All right, we'll have more transatlantic soccer in just a moment. Right, we have the free kick lined up now and the Italian team complaining about the wall and they complained enough for Winsman to award a yellow card we've been trying to get this free kick away for about two minutes <laughs> and now the Italians move the ball forward hoping to prove that that will uh, make their case All right, the players in that wall must be 10 yards from the ball. All right, that's the way it's set up now for the free kick. They say Naskin. Naskin deflected. On that kind of a play, Naskin usually just goes and attacks the ball. And he did it that time. I think the Italians knew that was going to happen. That's why they kept trying to get Naskin's back. Ugalati cross in front or flick down in front is picked off by Alberto. Di Bernardo, nice ball to Bogey. Oh, good defensive play, deflected away. Bogey went it back again to Alberto. And out of Bogey with 31 51 to play in the game. Johan Naskins, right of the box. Naskins plays it back for Franz. Beckenbauer looking for somebody coming through. He goes to Romero. Romero, Taroni made the play on him. Davis picked it off, but again, it's Roma with the ball, and Roma comes to the midfield line with room. Roma in the Cosmo zone. Man on the right now. 
Garnecki now in the box with Wilson. Alberto came over to break it up. And they give corner kick. Alberto came over to help Bruce Wilson. Alberto mad at the official because he felt the ball went off Garnecchia. First time Wilson has looked in serious trouble, Jim, there. Yes. Here's the corner. And a goal. And a goal. A great goal. And Versace did not come out and get that. And this game is tied at two. I think that was uh, Ancoletti who may have gotten a lot to wait and see when he turns his uh, shirt. It's a great headed goal, but Versus again beaten on the position. This is his ball all the way. Gets played into the penalty area. You see he takes a step backwards instead of attacking the ball and lets the player get inside him. Ancoletti gets inside him and, and knocks him in the corner. And Versic again going a little bit too much to his right instead of attacking that, attacking that cross. Roberto Cabanas is coming to the game for the Cosmos, replacing Angelo Di Bernardo. And now, like Wednesday night, the Cosmos have been tied after taking a 2-0 lead. It's a brand new game with three minutes and 24 seconds to play. So Roma, a beautiful header goal by Ancelotti. Garnecchia also had a great cross to set that up. And now a foul on Roma. The Cosmos will get a free kick. We're going to look at Cabanas, who's 19 years old, a new acquisition from Paraguay. Cabana broken up and out clear and it's going to be picked up by Alberto so it's a 2 2 game now he now you scored twice in the first half to give the Cosmos a 2 nothing lead here's Cabana now he has great speed knocked away it'll be a Cosmos throw in Ugalati scored in the first half to cut the Cosmos lead to two to one, and now Ancelotti has scored here off a corner to tie the match at two. Bogey, Cabana, Cabana coming through, touched it to Giorgio, but it was knocked away from behind. The tough Roma defense. Darnecchia making a great move, and finally was stripped of the ball by Alberto. And they call a foul. Oh, that's a tough call because Alberto held his position, made the tackle, and uh, Karnakia just ran into him. All right, they put it in play right away, and Reisbergen knocked it away. Let's look at it again. Pressure by Bogachevich here. You see him hold his position. Carlos Alberto holds position. Karnakia runs right into him, falls down. All right, here's the ball now quickly up here to Romero. Romero in the box. Touches it to Kinaya. That's just went wild. Great pass that time. Great pass that time. By Romero. Not only a good pass, but he held the ball well and drew two players, which is really what helped uh, Giorgio Kinaya to get as free as he was. Uh, he didn't have a great deal of time to get the shot off, and uh, he had to push it very quickly, and it just skimmed by the post. But that's, uh, I think that's only the fourth shot Giorgio's taken, and two of them have gone in. Great opportunity for Kinaya that time. But the game stays tied at two. 28 minutes and nine seconds of the match. Cosmos and Roma. Good game again. And remember Monday. The conclusion of the double uh, of this tournament in a great doubleheader. City and Roma in the first game. Cosmos, Vancouver in the second starting at 12.30. All right, here's Romero now. Coming in the box. To lose one man. And then has the ball picked off by Maggiore. Uh -huh. Also victimized by a little tug in his shirt that nobody uh, saw because it was done on the blind side of the referee. And he uh, desperately appeals, but referee says nothing doing. Hard shot in person made a great save. A great shot that time by Ugalotti. And Bursic was up to it. That was on its way in the goal, Seamus. Great end-to-end -end action here by the, by both teams. A super shot by uh, Ugalotti. Good to see that he's really unafraid to take a whack from a good 30 yards out. Versus did well to parry it away. Headed out of there by Beckenbauer. Off the corner kick. Naskins now, and they're going to call dangerous play against Roma. Cosmos put it in play to Ricky Davis. Ricky's not getting as much room on that right side as he had. They closed him down in the second half. Yeah, the midfield defense is a little tighter now for Roma. They're really not letting space. But there's Cabanas free. 
Nice ball to Romero coming in the box. And again, he was ridden off. Good defensive play by Maggiore again. Oh, it's very hard to penetrate an Italian defense uh, running through it. They're, it's very rare that they will let you get through it. They uh, are very tough, very physical, but very clean. They just get very uh, strong body positions. So uh, it's very easy to be nudged off the ball if you're not very, very tough. And also, they help out a lot. It always seems as if you're not really going against one defender but two, yeah. no matter who the player is. There always seems to be help there for him. All right, now it's Cosmos playing it back to Alberto. The Flyers in the second period leading. Islanders leading the Flyers three to two in the second period. At game six, Islanders lead three games to two. They could wrap it up today. But right now it's soccer. Nation. Cabanas heads it back to Johan, but it was headed out of there nicely. And now Cabanas gets it back again. And they're going to call what? Foul against Cosmos. Winsman made the call. Uh, tough call again. Uh, he claims, in fact, that Romero leaned over and allowed the player to, to collapse over him rather than challenging for the ball. And that's, again, a referee's judgment call if he thinks the, the, the player uh, putting the physical pressure on uh, is not necessarily the one who's always fouling. It can be the player being challenged by, uh, by bending over. Cosmos on the ball, harassing, and they knock it out of bounds to the far sideline. Naskin knocked it away for Moro Amenta. It'll be throw in Roma. 24-57 in the match. There'll be no overtimes or shootouts. This game ends in a tie. Each club will receive a point. Second bar. Beautiful control. Naskin to Romero. Not very good control that time, but the Cosmos get it back. Naskin to Romero again. Romero to Alberto. Little back heel for Bogey. Bogey held by Roberto Scarnecchia. And Bogey, in an unusual flare of temper, gets a yellow card for pushing Scarnecchia. I don't think Scarnecchia got hit in the face. I think after he committed the foul, well, let's watch it. I think after he committed the foul, he was just trying to take attention away from it. Let's watch this. Obvious foul to begin with, but let's see if Bogey really hit him. Or, or whether he hit the well, Yeah, he did get him with his elbow. Uh, no question, the elbow yeah. came across. Yeah. Yes, you're right. I... Bogey did hit him. And then Bogey uh, pushed him again, and he got a yellow card, but so did Skarnekia. Free kick now. 24-17 to play in the match. Bogey in the box, headed away. Rick Davis has picked it up. And now it's cleared by Roma. Bruce Wilson at midfield for the Cosmos. Coming up on the 24-minute mark to play in the match. Cabana has Wilson in the left. Plays it to Bogey. Back to Cabana in the box. Bogey. And off the right foot, he can't get. Great opportunity. Some tremendous work by Cabanas there. Cabanas really electrifying this uh, Cosmos crowd. The first time they've seen him play here in this stadium. And uh, he's really turned, he turns on those Jets with about 40 yards out from goal and is causing a lot of trouble to that defense and teaming up with Romero very well. He has the Nino type speed, and that is great speed. Oh, what a great ball. Now here comes Roma, three on three. Shot just went wide, just went wide. A hard shot by Carlo Ancelotti, who scored the tying goal a couple of minutes ago. Well, Ancelotti impressed me a great deal in the first half, Jim. I thought he uh, moved the ball beautifully, took up some great positions on the left side, gave a lot of trouble to the Cosmos defense. He's got the goal, and he's looked dangerous every time he's on the ball. Now here's Reisberg, and the Cosmos come the other way. Vim for Giorgio in the box. Giorgio still with the ball. And now they're going to call what? Dangerous gonna... play. Dangerous play. Yeah, was coming in there with Pinalia. The ball bobbling around there. Giorgio trying to get it down, but because he's under pressure from a lot of players, he pulls it up in the air again, heads it again, tries to reach. Now you see his foot go up, and the defender Rocca comes through with his head, and the referee quite rightly 
uh, calls a uh, dangerous play on Georgia. All right, we're back to the live action now, and Roma on the ball. It's Davis with the intercept. Nice touch to Franz, and the Cosmos come attacking. Beckenbar comes to the box. Plays it for Georgia. Georgia over the left footed shot. This just went over the top. Kinalia trying to put it in the upper right hand corner. Just missed it. A great threat started by Beckenbauer. Well, Beckenbauer uh, just absolutely goes right by Roca during this. Now you see Georgia pull a left. He's only got one shot, and it's a near post. The keeper is there, but he tried for the upper corner and just got under it too much. And the fans now chanting Cosmos. Alberto to Wilson to Carlos. Carlos to Nation. Naskin's a beautiful ball to Ricky Davis to open things up on the right side. Here comes Rick Davis on the right wing. There's his cross, and it's easily knocked out as Kinalia was double teamed in the box. Naskin. Shot! And it just went wide. Corner kick. I think that was Cabanas. I think that's his first shot as a Cosmos player here at the stadium, and uh, Giorgio applauding him there. Kinalia says, good effort. And again, great burst of speed through by Naskin. Bogey corner. Almost handled. No, the referee said it was on his chest. Cosmos oh, won a handball. Oh, boy. That looked like a handball from here. And Winsterman said no. I'd like to see that again. I don't know if we have it or not. Here's Roca against Reichsbergen. Nice ball to cross it over to the other side and open it up from there. Zanekia. Excuse me, Skarnekia. Try to cross it. Now here comes Cabanas. He has impressed in it. Cabanas, a nice ball to Romero. Teammate for the Paraguayan national team. Bogey, Cabanas for Romero. Romero, a chip, and a goal! I, I think it was put in by number 13. I think it was put in by Peccianini. I'm not sure if Giorgio gets that goal or not, but I think Peccianini put it in. Cabanas and Romero. What great understanding from these two Paraguayan national players. Okay, here you see now. It's a nice square ball, again, which pulls the defense a little bit to the right. Now you'll see a second bar advancing it. Nice little short ball, a good return pass. And that's Cabanas. Over to Romero. Romero flashes. Look at that foot go across. Now we see the header. Yeah, it looks like Peccianini put it in. Not to be faulted because Kinalia was right there with him, putting a lot of pressure on him. And the Cosmos leading 3-2. Well, we'll have to get the official uh, word on that, but it's uh, from the picture and the replay there. It sure looked like the defender under great pressure from Georgia put it in his own uh, upper corner. Roca. And a goal! What a great goal by Roca. And again, the Cosmos have been victimized after they've scored a goal. It happened in the first half. And Roca has tied the match at three. Well, this man can do it. He's seen the international wars. Now watch him set up his left foot. He pulls it across for his left foot, and he whacks it to the far corner. Look at the unbelievable right up into that far corner. No chance for Bursic. He came out, but really, I don't think anybody could have stopped that. A wonderful goal. All right, they're going to call, I believe, a foul against Roma. That looked, time, it looked like Romero got his uh, leg yeah, up. Yeah, it looked like it was a high foot initially, and then they came through, and uh, the uh, let, referee let that go and then called a foul on the next play. All right, the Cosmos and Roma in an exciting match. It's 3-3 as Roca came back with a brilliant goal to tie it. Ricky Davis in the box. In front, shot. Cabana just went wide. And a goal kick coming up. 18 minutes to play in the match. The Cosmos 3. Roma 3. We'll have more transatlantic soccer in just a moment. <laughs> Cabanas has really created a lot of things out here today. Is Nathan putting pressure on. Knocked away by Cabanas, but it's controlled by Peccianini. Wilson went in the ear to Cabanas, and now a touch to Beckenbar. 
Braun, now to Romero. Romero, a little touch to Carlos. Still a 3-3 game as Giorgio Kinaya just missed as he wound up from about 16 yards. Coming up on Thursday night. Thursday night baseball on USA Sports. Cincinnati against San Diego. What a great job Jerry Coleman has done with that San Diego club. And the Reds, always an outstanding team. Watch him play on USA. All right, with the ball, Alberto now. 16-15, into Cabanas. Cabanas in the box, is taken down. And there's no call. Oh, my word. There's no call. Cabanas penetrating was taken down in the box. Well, again, not, not a great deal of protest there by the Cosmos players, so they must have felt that there was uh, some kind of legitimate attack. Look at that little flick on by Bogicevic. And there you see the tackle in the penalty area, Giorgio coming back. Back to the action, and the Beckenbauer shot is smothered by Franco Tancredi. That third Cosmos goal was an own goal, as Seamus pointed out, by Franco Peccianini. Here's Roca, who tied the game. 3-3 now. Roma comes on the attack. 15-25 to play in the match. Naskins broke it up. And now it's going to be foul against Naskin. And he and Roca embrace. <laughs> it's been a tough game. Very competitive. Tremendously competitive and very open. You know, it's not been a tight, obviously a sixth goal, a tight defensive game, but not even a suggestion of that. Right from the beginning. Into Ogilotti and Bogey. Got right. it back to Bursic. The cultured foot of Bogachevich. Uh, you know, a lot of players in that situation, Jim, we tend to try to turn and knock it out of the box. But yeah. his, his instinct is always right just to put it to the nearest player who's the goalkeeper. All right, here's Carlos Alberto now. 14.35 to play in the match. And what a match it's been. Roma 3, Cosmos 3. Naskins had it knocked away. Beckenbauer stuck a foot in, knocked the ball back. But here's Roma with it. Naskins and Davis stripped them of the ball, and they're going to call foul against Cosmos. And down is Amenta. Ancelotti, uh, I mean, Amenta is down. Uh, Naskins' tackle was just a split second too late. Naskins comes in very hard on these slide tackles, and he takes them down. Uh, uh, just lost track of the ball. Let's take a look at it here. There's Amenta accelerates just now, and in comes uh, Naskins and takes him down. All right, we'll have more transatlantic soccer in just a moment. This game is now a 4-3 Cosmos game. And here's how it happens. Cabanas in the middle of the action again. Look at this lovely cross, and that's the head of Carlos Alberto. 
and the Cosmos have gone up 4-3, and came as we've seen some marvelous oh, goals today. Tremendous international soccer, just the very best you can see in this sport. Carlos Alberto, when you least expect it, comes all the way up through the defense, gets right in on Marks, a great cross from Cabanas, and it's 4-3 Cosmos. All right, now it's Roma attacking again. And they're going to call foul on Cosmos with 12.40 to play. What a tremendous game. Seven goals scored. 4-3 Cosmos. 12.35 to play in the game. Roma with a free kick. If you're just tuning in, you've missed a heck of a game. <laughs> Roma in the maroon and orange. There's Winsome in the official now. Allowing a Roma player to come into the game. A substitute for Roma. Ancelotti is going out. And number three is uh, Denadai. Michel Denai. D I N A O I. If that's the player in there. We don't have numbers in the front on the. Uh, His name is Denadai. Yeah, he's number three. And he's coming in with only 12 minutes left to play. And again, Ancelotti must be just very tired. Ancelotti's done a tremendous amount of work in this game. Very impressive player. Speaking of impressive players, Francesco Roca. Yep. Dinadai, number three. Karnakia, whose corner kick to Ancelotti tied this game at two. Cosmos led 2 0 in this match, and it was 2 1, 2 2, 3 2, Cosmos, 3 3, now 4 3, Cosmos. Reisberger knocked it away. And here comes Romero. Who's looking for Cabana. Too far. Cabana has great speed though, doesn't he? And you know, Romero will look for him immediately. Now they give the ball to Cosmos. Yeah, a free kick though, not a throw in. They, again, they, call it, they, they call it a free kick because they felt that the defensive man was uh, illegally held him off the ball. But it was his speed that set that up. And now it's bogey. Curling it in the box for Giorgio with his defender on him, takes him down. Yep. And it's going to be a penalty. Sinalia was dragged down in the box. Giorgio dragged down in the box, and Winsman does call this one. No question uh, that he was making a turn. He was going to beat him. Watch him. Watch Giorgio turn here now. He's got the defenders. He turned him around. The player was playing him too tightly, and Giorgio spun right off his body. And uh, Santorini had no choice but to, well, not no choice, but he certainly pulled him down. Now I think he may be ejected. He's getting a yellow card, certainly. But uh, excellent play by Giorgio and bad, uh, bad defense by Santorini, who allowed himself to play too tightly to Giorgio, who spun off his body. That's one of the keys of defense. You cannot get too close to the defender. You've got to allow yourself a little maneuvering room, and he didn't. I think he now is going to take this penalty kick. Now, the last time Giorgio took a penalty kick, it was to tie. <laughs> His record is uh, to set the That's goal record, point record. Yeah. He was saved. Now Giorgio looking for his third goal of this game. And his fifth in the tournament. The Cosmos leading 4-3. to three. Kinalia against Franco Tancredi. Giorgio. Wide. Fires. Go! Wow. Did he pick his spot? I wonder. <laughs> the last time that he took the penalty shot and missed. He said he had changed his mind. This time, he did not. He just wound up and hit it as hard as he could. And look where he puts it in the upper right-hand corner. Usually he hits it low to the ground, but way up. Look at that. Curving way up. The keeper went the right direction, but committed himself low where most penalty kicks go. And, of course, it went high, which is kind of risky. But uh, Giorgio knows what he's doing. He's the, uh, the king of goal scoring. And now the Cosmos have a little breathing space, a 5-3 lead with 9-18 to go. I wonder when the last time was that a team scored five goals against Roma. <laughs> I wonder when the they last time. They don't give up five goals in right. five weeks. I wonder when the last time Roma was in an eight-goal game, period. <laughs> Great for the fans. Davis knocked it away. Now we have nine minutes to play in the match. 5-3 the Cosmos. Kinalia has scored three times. Garnecchia went over the goal line. It'll be a goal kick coming up for Cosmos. That was Giorgio's 498th career goal. And five in this tournament. And the Cosmos, should they win here this afternoon, would have a commanding edge for the Cup because then they would have four points. And another team has more than one. However, we'll have game two coming up right after this one. 
And it'll be Vancouver playing Manchester City. So you know somebody will pick up either one point or two points in that game. 5-3 the Cosmos. There it is. An 8-10 to play in the match. Jim Carvelis and Seamus Mellon. What a game it's been. Ben Reisbergen. To Rick Davis. Reisbergen rolls it to Franz. Franz in no hurry. Now to Naskins. And a foul. Naskins is fouled. Now, I hope things don't get a little tough now. I don't think so. Naskins very cool. And it only gets tough if you start to retaliate. Uh, and I think Naskins is, you know, he's such an experienced player. He's played in the very top level of the game in the world. He's not going to retaliate with seven minutes to go in the game and run, run the risk of getting a red card in the game suspension. All right. Beckenbauer taking a lot of time. Time on the Cosmos side now. 7.25 and a two-goal lead. 5-3, to three, if you can believe that. In the bar. Cabanas! And it just went over the top. Is he dangerous or is he Ooh. dangerous? Now, Naskins has a few words for that defender that knocked him down before. I believe that was uh, Donati. I think he was also upended in the box as the ball went by him. Uh, he got uh, sideswiped, really. Cabanas has been a marvelous substitute for the Cosmos. And we've really seen that young man's skill here today. And we know now why the Cosmos picked him up. Only 19 years old. A Beckenbauer back heel away from Donati. And out of Wilson with 635. To Giorgio. Kinalia. Back to Wilson. Cosmos in no hurry at all. They lead by two. Alberto. To Franz. To Carlos. Here comes Alberto. Trying to get it to Giorgio on the left, and it was picked off. Giovanelli. Ricky Davis should get there first. And he knocked it over the goal line. Ricky knocked it over the goal line. A corner kick coming up with 5.57 to play in the match. Garnecchia, who converted one of these corner kicks into a goal on a beautiful cross. Here it comes high. Not a very good cross this time. Over everyone's head and picked up by the speedy Cabanas. And the fans love it every time he touches the ball. Reisbergen. What a ball to Cabanas. Cabanas trying to get around the defender. But no dice there. <laughs> the experienced Mr. Peccianini says, I'll take care of that. Cerrone. Cosmo still pressuring. 5-19 to play in the match. Cosmos have scored eight goals in these two games. Well, this has been a fans game, Jimmy. A really su superb game for the fans to come out and watch. Kind of a nightmare game for coaches, really. The ball goes up and down the field. Goals at either end. But a tremendous game of soccer. Garnecchia didn't like the Naskin tackle. Garnecchia lost his shoe. Naskins has been tackling everything in sight. I guess uh, Karnecchia doesn't want to play with that shoe anymore. Well, that's the way Karnecchia, look at that tackle. That's the way uh, Naskins likes to play it, play it tough. And, you know, if they start push, pushing or pulling or punching, uh, his retaliation is when the ball is being played, he's going to go and give a good hard tackle rather than lose his cool when the ball is dead. Italian fans know Johan Naskins, and I'm not talking about the World Cup. When he was about, I think it was 16 or 17 years old, here it comes. And that was dangerous, but it went by two players. Ugolato was right there. Crossed just a little high. That could have been very dangerous. He, he marked Sandro Mazzola <laughs> in a very big game. That's and right. I think he was 16 or 17 years old and, and marked him well. Marked him out of the game. He's done that to some people. Here comes Beckenbauer. Cosmos continue to attack. Bronze in the box, and it's broken up. Marvelous to see how that Italian defense collapses on the threat. I mean, it was just uh, like an accordion closing in. It was really wonderful to watch. They concentrate instantly in front of the goal and shut off the threat. Ugolotti, a good ball. Donati back to Ugolotti, and there is Ricky Davis to make the play. Great play by Ricky. He saw it all the way. Not a Franz. Franz looking around for support. To Romero. Knocked away again. Two men on him. Peccianini made the play. 
Donati. Time remaining, 321. Jim Carvelis, Seamus Mallon. Stay tuned for game two in the Challenge Cup Transatlantic. It'll be Manchester City at Vancouver over most of these cable systems. The cross, and it's Naskins to clear it in front nicely. When you play against Naskins, you know he's in the game. He lets you know. Naskins headed it down. Cabanas left it for Bogicevic. That Vancouver-Manchester City game is this evening at 11 p.m. Eastern time. This evening at 11 p.m. Our doubleheader for today. And the big doubleheader will be Monday. As all four tournament teams will be on this field at Giant Stadium. Manchester City against Roma in game one. Cosmos and Vancouver in game two. Time remaining, 2.23, Seamus. Ooh, oh, what a great it. ball. Roca, and what a great save. And Davis to Wilson, Reisberg and deflected. And Versus made a tremendous save on Roca. And look at Reisberg. Check it, Nastens. What an effort by Johan Nastens. Well, Roca, you know, the player who scored that wonderful third tying goal, you wondered if he could do it again or at least get, get him one back, and he's all alone in Versage, and a great save by uh, young David, who had a, a rough time on the uh, on the third goal. Ugalati uh, now against well. Ricky Davis. Excuse me, Seamus. And Ugalati looks like he lost it over the goal line. He did, and Ricky Davis made the play. Let's watch it. Look at Roca in alone here on Versage. A good sprawling save by David. The ball comes back out, and in the uh, ensuing run, there you see... Davis comes in, flips it up in the air, giving the defense time to cover. Back to Wilson, who's cleared away. All right, now here's Bogey at the midfield line. Islanders lead Philly 4-2 to two at the end of two, trying to win a Stanley Cup for the New York area for the first time since 1940 when the Rangers did it. I think Jack Simon uh, televised that game. Did he direct that game? <laughs> Jack Simon, our fine director. All right, here's Kinalia, who has scored three times today against Roma. This game will be shown back in Italy, and you know Giorgio will love for the home fans to see him score three times. And now here's Alberto, who scored a marvelous and a very important goal in this game. Look at Bogey. What great skill by Bogey. Now look, trying to get Cabanas, but it was off the mark. Roca. 29 seconds. And now a foul against the Cosmos. Naskins again <laughs> coming in uh, to sort things out in the middle there. It's amazing. What have we got? 17 seconds left to go, and he's playing like it's 1 1. He only knows how to play one way. The John Havlicek of the Cosmos. Constantly in, the, in motion. Oh, good scissors attempt by Skarnecchia, but off the mark. So the Cosmos will beat Roma. And the fans here, again, we didn't get an official count. It must be near 40,000. Really enjoyed it. And that is it. The end of a memorable soccer match here at Giant Stadium with the New York Cosmos beating Roma 5-3 as ex-Italian star Giorgio Canaglia, bronze second bar and company, destroy Roma 5-3. But it was an outstanding match, and it was a 3-3 game with only about 50.